Okay, and we're back. And um, very happy to answer any WordPress questions that you've got. And uh, in this more informal half hour, time for me if you want to talk me through widgets or anything else that's causing any problems. So if you've got um, any, any questions uh, that you want to ask, you need to pop those in the chat box right now. And I'll see those as they come in. I'm very happy to, to deal with those. And I'm going to start to work through the questions now, but please feel free to add those in. Now, Brian says, is WordPress the same as WP3D? Crikey, I've never even heard of that, Brian. So what I'm going to do is we get a little bit informal in this half hour. So if I just remove my slides and take that page down, I usually just pop my webcam on here so that you can see that there is a real person at the end of this presentation. Okay, and let's take a look at what WP3D is, because I've never heard of that, Brian. So WP3D, let's see what it is. Aha, that looks like it's a plugin. then, is that? What is it? The Ultimate WordPress. Right, okay, um, don't know what it is. Never used it. It looks like it is, um, it just looks like it's, uh, I think it's a plugin by the looks of it says it's a plugin and it as, as far as I can see just look at it very quickly Brian it's something that you would add to WordPress without having time to read it and then it just allows you to do some cool things it, it, it looks to me like it's either it's either a WordPress theme or it's a plugin I'd have to dig a little deeper to work out which one it is it says it's a plugin up here um, it says it's a plugin and what it looks to me like is that you add it to your WordPress site and then it allows you to do many cool things. So if you look at the features, it looks like it does all sorts, but I'm not familiar with it, to be honest with you. It looks like it does all sorts of things on there. Um, oh, yes, look at that. Yeah, so I don't, I don't even know what Matterport is, I'm afraid. So it, I don't know what that is. It looks like it's an, an industry that I'm not in. Um, so what does it do? Branding. Yeah, it, it, it looks like it's a bespoke plugin for particular needs. I'm guessing in your business you probably have those needs. Um, but it, you just would add that to WordPress. So you would buy it, download it, and then either bring it in as I showed you how to use plugins, or you would show it in as I, as I showed you how to bring in themes. But um, there are many, many, many of these, Brian. And um, you know, add them, take them away, activate them, deactivate them. It really doesn't matter. Um, and, and most of them, to be honest with you, offer a a, a trial period so if you find that you don't like it you'd probably be able to get your money back anyway um, you know they're, they're pretty good like that so yeah I, I don't I'm not familiar with it but it just looks to me like it's a very bespoke uh, plug-in for people with specific needs so it looks like it shows um, uh, models 3d models or something like that I'm not sure but um, that's what it looks like hopefully that will answer your question uh, what other questions do we have so um, Sally says how easy is it to link to an online shop site? Any recommendations for a shop site? Yeah. Now, um, with shop sites, you will hear a lot about sites like Shopify. So if I, if I just go and do a web search now and look for e-commerce, for instance, e-commerce. Uh, there you go, Shopify is right at the top. EKM is popular, 3D Cart I'm not so familiar with. I think Magento is another one off the top of my head. I'm sure that's e-commerce. Is that Magento? Just thinking off the top of my head here, Magenta for e-commerce. Um, yeah, they're all they're all e-commerce sites. Um, one of the things I would say to you, Sally, is, and I'm a firm believer in this, is is I like to build everything on my own hosting. So Shopify is great. You know, it does a brilliant job. But you're building your business on somebody else's land, and if Shopify suddenly decides to put the prices up or change its commission structure. If you've got all your products in Shopify, well, hard luck. You've either got to pay or you've got to go through the pain of moving it. And the pain of moving it is like changing your bank. You know, it's something you don't want to do very often. And this is the problem with building on, on places that aren't portable. Okay? I want you to be like a snail. I want you to carry your business on your back. Uh, and when we get caught with people, when we get caught with gatekeepers, you know, I have to ask somebody to update my website we're slowing the whole process down and with WordPress it shouldn't be like that and it shouldn't be like that with e-commerce 
if you've got a new product and you want to list it, you should be able to do it in five minutes, as you've seen how fast WordPress is this evening. Okay, we shouldn't have to wait a week for somebody to get around to doing it and then have to pay them £200 for the privilege. And that's why I love these kinds of sites. So what I would always recommend is that you build your own e-commerce site. Now, you could do that in WordPress. And the most popular way to do that is using WooCommerce. WooCommerce. They've all got funny names. WooCommerce is, a, is the most popular WordPress plugin for e-commerce. And it will allow you to take payments via PayPal, uh, via check if you want to do it by check, you know, by post. Uh, you could take it. Uh, you could link it up with uh, you know, all the conventional paying tools. Is it Sage Pay, uh, PayPal, all, all the things that you need to do? So it has all those integrations, and you can start immediately for free with WordPress. Now, the deeper you get into WooCommerce, uh, you are probably going to end up buying some plugins. So if I just go into the plugins area here, um, it is very easy to get started with. I've, I've done a couple of these for people, and I've had one myself in the past as well. Um, but the, the great thing about this is, is that if you suddenly decided, for instance, say you were hosted on SiteGround and all of a sudden something went wrong with SiteGround, maybe their support was rubbish and you thought, Joy, it's time to move, then you could very easily just export your WordPress site to HostGator or GoDaddy or whoever it was. You wouldn't lose any of your content uh, and, and the move would be easy. We just call it a WordPress migration. It's really easy to do. Whereas if you were on Shopify and the prices doubled, for instance, this is just examples, then you, you're a captive, you're caught, and you've, you've either got to go through the pain of moving and changing everything um, and losing all the sales in the meantime, or you've just got to stay and put up with it. And that's why I'm always in favor of building your own sites. I just think it's a better long-term option. So WooCommerce is free. It's just a normal plugin. What I'd recommend you do if you want to have a play with it is just put one of those free test sites up on Hostinger, like I showed you how to do. Just download WooCommerce and have a play with it before you commit to anything. Just see what you think. If it works for you, great. But it's very, very easy to use, and you own the asset in the business, which is the website. And you don't have to ask people every time you want to change or add a new product it makes you more dynamic so yeah I, I, I would do that if I were you that's I, I'd look at WooCommerce first that would be my recommendation as a WordPress fan okay I'm getting lots of questions I'll try and get through as many of these as I can uh, meta tags uh, Timothy's talking about meta tags yeah now you know I'm not an SEO expert Timothy but just let me show you something okay you know well, I always say to people look, I'm not an ex SEO expert but if you put my name into uh, this in fact let's do it in incognito so it doesn't bring any per personal results in if you go into incognito so this is not bringing any personal data in and put my name in there Paul Teague uh, just, just putting my name in so there's all sorts of Paul Teagues in the world okay right at the top there comes Paul Teague's blog okay my WordPress site okay now I'm not an SEO expert but for my name my blog comes right at the top of the search engine you'll see I've all got, got all sorts of other things in there with my name on it in the search engines now so I'm not an SEO expert so um, but I can tell you some very simple things that will get your blog high in the search engines number one use all in one SEO or Yoast if you want to but all in one is SEO is what I use number two use Google XML sitemaps number three change the permalinks the way that I showed you to change the permalinks. Then uh, write great content, just write blogs that have great content in them. And that, frankly, the, the, Google has all sorts of algorithms and complicated things and people will relieve you of your money till the cows come home, you know, trying to get you to the top of the search engines. But the, what will always be true about Google and all search engines is, is that they need to locate great content. And if you just write great content and you have the basics correct, then you'll do okay, right? You can spend a fortune on it if you want to, that's fine, uh, but, but actually just get the basics right and you're good to go. So um, don't worry about you know, all, all the bits and pieces, um, all the meta tags and this, that, and the other. Just get your structure set up, write great content, um, do what I've shown you to do, and, and if you're a smaller business, you know, it's just you and you're doing the best you can to get your site done, that will be fine. It will, it, it, it's done me fine for years. Okay? It's just a bit of SEO basics. Now, of course we can tweak. Of course we can superpower everything. Of course we can do more. But at a basic level, that will just get you going. Uh, oh, Brian's doing virtual reality. Okay, Brian. So it's a bespoke um, plug-in for your industry. That's why I'm not familiar with it. Right, so Robin says, I have a WordPress site and I'm using an old version of WordPress. Oh, Robin, right, okay, yeah, get it upgraded. Get it upgraded. One of the most common reasons for people having WordPress sites hacked is because they're using an old 
a WordPress version uh, that is vulnerable to attack. Um, let me show you how seriously I take this. If you've got more than three WordPress sites, this is a great tool to have. I um, This is a paid product, by the way, but if you have more than one site, uh, three sites, I beg your pardon, this really starts to become very handy. Sorry, just let me concentrate while I'm putting my password in here. I'm talking and... and There we go. So if I just log into this, I'll show you how I do this. So I've got 15 WordPress installations at the moment, which I know is a bit crazy, but this is how much I like it. And I use something called Manage WP. You'll see all my WordPress installations on the left-hand side there. And all I have to do to update my sites, and I do this certainly once a week, but usually once a day, I click Sync Dashboard. It automatically checks my plugins, my themes, make sure that there's nothing out of date. And if things are out of date, I only have to click one button and it'll take care of the lot for me. Can you see it's just checking all my sites now, going through all 15. This is a real bind to do if you did it separately. This is called managewp.com and I recommend it when you start to get the three sites, this becomes a nuisance. It's really important that you keep your WordPress up to date. Um, and so, well, I, 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 as you can see, I've already done that today, but um, I can clean, I can just clean all the bits and bobs that I don't want across three sites. I don't even have to log in. It's all taken care of. So it's really important, really, really important that you keep your WordPress installation up to date. So yes, you need to bring that right up to date, Robert. It's really important that you do that because your site is vulnerable without it. Uh, Drew is saying, I use WordPress using one.com. Is this an okay hosting site? Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Drew, I, there's, not, there's not a lot I like. I've, I, because I work with clients as an advisor for the Chamber of Commerce, uh, because I, you know, frankly, I've used virtually everything there's on, on earth uh, in the past. I haven't used one.com, interestingly. Um, I, you know, I, I, some of them, I think, just make it too complicated. What I would say to you is um, always look for hosting that has a basic cPanel. So do you remember I showed you my cPanel earlier? So I like hosting with cPanel because it just makes your WordPress installations, just makes everything really easy. So uh, I would generally say to you, just look for hosting, web hosting, with a basic cPanel. Um, always ask, it doesn't have to be SiteGround, it doesn't have to be HostGator, uh, but I, I, you know, I've used lots and lots of hosting services, and some of them, I just think, you know, why, why are people using these? They make life far too complicated. Um, basic cPanel makes life really, really easy if you're going to do this yourself. So I can't tell you specifically about one.com. What I would say to you is if you're happy with it, don't change. You know, if you've got no reason to change, don't change if you're happy with it. But if you think cPanel looks easier, then it might be time, you know, maybe to consider something a little bit uh, different. Uh, let's have a look. Um, lots of questions here. Do you recommend anti-robot challenges on contact forms? Won't they put some people off? Yes, Timothy, I usually disable, to be honest with you. I, I usually, uh, Timothy's talking about the capture um, on that form that I created. And I'll show you how to do it, Timothy, it's really easy. Um, I usually do, I, what I always do with security is I disable it until I have reason not to. So if I started getting lots of spam uh, forms on my site and it was becoming a problem for me, I'd then be forced to enable the capture. Now, let me just talk you through that because you may not know what, well, I'll tell you what capture is. Capture is that annoying thing, that annoying challenge that you get. Where is it? Contact me. These things that you have to put in, the capture code. Let me just get my highlighter pen. These just stop robots and spam and evil people sending you automated messages. Um, and we can enable or disable that. And you're absolutely right, uh, Timothy, I would normally disable that by default. Um, and to do that, using the plugin I've just shown you, uh, you go into your plugins, no you don't, I beg your pardon, you go into your settings, and then you can go into fast secure contact form, actually you can do it either way, go into security, and let me just get my highlighter pen so you can see this on the screen, where it says enable secure image, just uncheck that if you want to get rid of it, just lose it and it's gone. Okay, so if I uncheck that now, and if I save the changes, and if I go back to my form, contact me, it's gone. So yes, by default I would, but if I started getting spam problems, I'd go straight back to it. Uh, the other thing, Timothy, is when you go to the slides, you will see that I have given you a recommendation for an anti-spam plugin, which is free. And again, if you use that, it will reduce those problems that you get. 
Um, Liz says, is it suitable for having a search facility which will search a hidden database? I'd like to do a database on Excel and then for this to somehow put itself into the website. Right, easiest way to do that, Liz, let me put you out of your misery. The easiest way to do that is to use Google Forms. I'm just, I'm, and I'm just thinking this aloud because you've, yeah, I think, I think, I think we can do this. Let me just check. Um, I, I use Google Drive for many, many, many things. Um, and you could use it for Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and you can create forms on it. Let me just look what you're trying to do. You want to create a database on an Excel spreadsheet, and you want to put it onto the website. Now, I'm not sure what, what you're doing here, Liz, but normally I would use Google Forms to capture the data. So I, I can create a test, test form. This is great. You don't need to use, uh, is it SurveyMonkey? You don't need to use any of those. I use Google Forms for all of mine. In fact, I've got one running at the moment for a project. So uh, it's a test form. You can just put questions in here. So if we can put a multiple choice question in there, so option one, option two, let me just, and option three. There we go. Um, and using uh, what this form will do is it will collect responses from people and put them into a responses database so that it will put them actually into a spreadsheet so it's it's like a survey if you want and you could then click and I've got to remember where this is because it's a little while since I've done it um, you need to click on the send button and you can actually embed that form into your site just there it gives you some embed code so if I copy that embed code And if I just create a quick page for that, I'll just show you how easy that is. Uh, I'll just call that form. Now, uh, just a quick word here. Because we're using code, we can't use the what you see is what you get editor. We have to use the tabs here and go into the, the text editor, the code editor. Um, so I've just highlighted that on the screen so you can see where that is. So if I click on the text editor and drop that bit of code in just there. When I go to visual, you'll see it automatically pulls in my Google my my Google form. There we go. But it, it's a bit slow tonight. I think the kids must be on Netflix or something, so when that publishes. Now what I'm not sure Liz, let me just put a, a quick new Google sheet in there. What I'm not sure is is whether you can actually do that on a normal spreadsheet. So to do it, you would click share. This is going a little bit slowly tonight. Maybe I've got too many tabs open. Let's close a few of those down. There we go. Is it, is it, is, I've got to give it a name. So if we call that test two, I want a name before it will let me share. Now, advanced, will it let me? Yeah, it will let me share the link to it, but it's not going to let me embed it. So I can't embed a spreadsheet, but I can embed a form to gather data. So I don't know whether that answers your your question with that. If it doesn't, just drop me an email, and I'll tell you another way to do that, because I, I have done that in the past. Um, so, Brian, do you have to create a block... Uh, a do you, do you have to create a blog page on your site, then post on the page as your written blog? Oh, hang on, I don't think I understand that. Do you have to create a blog page on your site, then post on the page as your written blog? Can you just qualify that, Brian? I'm not quite sure what you mean. Um, Hilda says, how easy is it to transfer a sandbox site developed on hosting a, to a live site in SoundCloud? It's really, really easy, very, very easy. Uh, this is another reason why I love SiteGround. Uh, where am I? Here we go. Um, SiteGround does something called one-click staging, and I absolutely love this, one-click staging. So in SiteGround, so, say I wanted to create, I'm not going to do this because these are like, oh, actually, I can do it on self-publishing in a circle. So self-publishing in a circle, say I wanted to create a completely new look and feel for a site, but I needed to leave the old site there in the meantime because I've got customers coming through. I could then create with SiteGround a staging copy. 
Okay, so create a staging copy there. I don't need to give any passwords. Is it going to force me to? No, do not password protect it. We can password protect it if we want to, but no one's going to find this. I can create a staging copy, which is basically a copy that no one can find. It's what we used to call like a dev server copy. We used to call this, uh, those of you who are a bit geeky will know that um, uh, what a dev server is, but basically it's a place that we can play around and we can get things right, and then we magically click a button and we overwrite the old site and put the new site up. Uh, just watch how easy this is with um, with SiteGround. So on SiteGround, all you've got to do, well, having built that site and tested it and, and got it right, you then click Push to Live, and it's there. Just like that, Push to Live. Sorry, I've said just like that again. I'm sounding like Tommy Cooper again. Uh, push to Live. Uh, you can either destroy it, replicate it, manage it, do what you want with it. Okay, but I love SiteGround for that. It's absolutely perfect for building your new look site with all your features and then without having that, you know, that we all hate it when our site's down and the new site's being built, we've lost everything and it's horrible. You don't have to do that. With SiteGround, it has this, this private area where you can quite happily build away and when it's ready, you push that button and off it goes. It's just there instantly. Wonderful, wonderful feature on SiteGround. It's one of the many reasons I, I like that service. Okay, do you need to back up the database? Yes, you do. Uh, let me recommend a plugin for you. Um, this is slightly more advanced, but let me show you how I, I do it. I use a plugin called, let me just leave that, and I use, uh, what's it called, Updraft. So um, if I click on Upload Plugin, not Upload Plugin, I beg your pardon. Let me just go to Add, I need to click on Add New, I beg your pardon. Add New Plugin. And it's called Updraft. Updraft. And it's this one, Updraft Backup Plugin. I, I almost needed that tonight, actually, because I, when I was preparing for this webinar, I accidentally deleted a live site. But don't worry, it was all backed up in back in minutes. So, but this is why I say, you know, if you if you have all these regimes and these good practices, then nothing can really kind of really get you. So it's installing that. It'll take a little while. I suspect the kids are on Netflix tonight, so because it's taken quite a long time. There we go. Oh, it's up. It's, that's up. Update has failed. Well, I tell you what. Let me show you it on a live site. Let me show you it on. Uh, where have I got a site? Have we got Paul T? Got uh, not yet. So let me just bring up my own site and um, I'll show it to you on there. Uh, but basically, up Updraft is my favorite way of doing that. And I'm just going to tidy up my area a little bit, actually. Just get, let me get rid of some, let me just clear some of these browser buttons here. Just excuse me while I, uh, for some reason, it doesn't want me to do that. So if I go to my own site, and then I can show how it works when it's ready installed. But yes, in, in very simple terms, get a backup regime. Um, I like this. Um, I, I used something else, but um, this is one of the great things about working with the Chamber of Commerce, is that I did a joint uh, WordPress session with another um, gentleman who teaches WordPress for the Chamber, and it was like comparing notes. He actually had a better plugin than I did for doing backup, so I, I use his plugin now. So plugins, install plugins, let me just get to my, and I, I use Updraft. Where is it? Look at all the plugins I have. There we go. There's there's Updraft there. If you go into the settings, the way the way that I do this is I have automated backups running. So um, uh, it just it will just back up your site automatically. By the way, it will also clone your site if you want to move your site. I've done that a few times as well. So in the settings, what I recommend you do is um, if you you know I don't blog every day, so weekly is fine for me. I, I have a, an automated weekly backup of the database and the files, I keep five on record, and um, I, I, I back up the plugins, the themes, the uploads, and all the other directories, and, and it does that automatically for me, and you'll see that I've got five plugins, one, one a week since January, so it just it just erases the old plug uh, the old backups, I beg your pardon, and if I wanted to restore my site, I would just click the restore button, and I could restore it to an earlier version, so I really recommend that, it's a superb uh, plugin, and it's free, I, I actually, I pay for that plug, I pay for a lot of my plugins, because I actually use the migrate and clone feature on it, um, which is excellent, but I, I do have to pay for that. Okay, I think we're nearly there, it's nearly half past eight, um, I 
think we're there. It looks like we've got lots of lovely feedback. Thank you very much for that. Uh, hopefully we've hit the spot and we've got lots of people still listening to the webinar, which is always great. Um, we are virtually at half past eight, so uh, I think I've got most of the questions there now. Um, let me just remind you before I go that um, you know clearly we've had an hour and a half tonight and I've whisked through an awful lot of things and some of it may have gone whoosh uh, over the top of your head and if it has don't worry about that because on the resources page um, I've done another presentation for the Chamber of Commerce and I'll put the link to that on the resources page where I go through a lot slower that process of installing a site from scratch. The webinar replay is going to be there too, so if you just want to pause the video and just look at it again and, and slow it down or look at it you know, three times and replay it and make sure you saw it correctly, then the replay is going to be there very shortly. But what I would recommend you do is use the training that the Chamber of Commerce uh, provides. Um, you know, these sessions are great fun. Um, you can get all those problems sorted at these sessions. You can work with somebody who knows what they're doing with WordPress, and they'll help you through it and talk you through those problems. Um, and um, you know, I worked. I did a WordPress session with a gentleman, well, with a lot of people, uh, about two weeks ago. There was a gentleman there who had been tearing his hair out trying to get WordPress installed, trying to figure out how to do it himself. And within an hour, we had him sorted. We, we, you know, months of struggle and tearing his hair out, we had it sorted within the hour. Um, because you just need to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing, and it can help you through that pain. So, a couple of sessions that we're running: Newton Rig, uh, both of them, both with Ray Cassidy. Um, both beginners sessions, both with WordPress. If you'd like to book in for one of those sessions, uh, then please contact, not tonight, uh, tomorrow morning from 9, uh, Catherine Dunstan, uh, call her at the chamber, give us a call, and just leave a message for her if Catherine's not around, and just let her know that you want to book on one of those courses. Obviously, it's always cheaper if you're a chamber member, so one of the benefits of chamber membership uh, so it's £65 for members or £120 for non-members, but I hope if you are struggling with WordPress that you'll use that service, and I really hope that it's been uh, very beneficial and helpful for you today. Thank you very much for joining us, and it's been great fun doing these webinars after, you know, over the last month, four weeks we've been doing these already, uh, and watch the emails to see uh, future presentations that we may have planned for you. Thank you for attending, and I'll see you at an event very soon. Bye-bye now.